Catechins, L-theanine and caffeine. These three components are what scientists would call green tea because that's what it really is if you break it down. There's not much else going on. You can talk about the different vitamins and minerals there. Of course, there are more chemical components in green tea, but only in trace amounts. Now let's start with L-theanine. Okay, so this is one of the exclusive properties to green tea together with fluoride. L-theanine is mostly known as a supplement. And there's two camps when it comes to the experiential effects of L-theanine. The first camp will say it makes me more relaxed. It allows me to sleep better. Then there's another camp that will tell you that L-theanine will make them more energetic. It actually acts as a little stimulant, right? Just like coffee, they have a shot of L-theanine and they feel a bit more productive. They feel more ready for the day. And the reason for that is that green tea or L-theanine will increase your alpha waves in your brain. This is neither a good or a bad thing because your brain goes through many different wavelengths throughout the day. You wake up in theta, which is between four to eight hertz, which is like this uh, very nice state where everything is slowing down and you're very receptive to new information and meditation and your brain is not running as fast. And then your wavelength basically increases or decreases depending on how you choose to operate your brain because some people are conscious and they can actually choose these things themselves. They don't need stimulants to affect their wavelength. Okay, so simply by meditation, you can access whatever wavelength you want. Okay, you can access a very stimulating wavelength where you can speak very fast and congruently and your brain is kind of on fire and working very fast in a conversational pace. This is a very good wavelength, right? This is what science is called the beta wavelength. And then there is the slower ones when the, when the brain kind of slows down and you're, you're more mellow, but you're also more thoughtful, right? So you're maybe more empathetic, you're more receptive to new information. It's like this meditative transcendental state. And then you can go all the way up to, to high frequency states where things speed up even more. However, that is also a bit energetically draining. So you want to kind of pace yourself throughout the day when it comes to your wavelength, if you've come to a point where you can consciously affect these things. And L-theanine puts some parts of the brain automatically into the alpha wavelength. It's neither good or bad, it's just what it is. But the interesting thing is, in order for you to have the supplementary amount, which is 400 mg's or more, you will have to drink a lot of green tea, okay? Because a cheap bag of green tea will contain maybe five mg's only of L-theanine. Whereas like the, the best quality green tea or black tea you can find out there will maybe reach 25, okay? So even then you get like some really good green tea, you're still gonna have to drink eight cups before you reach the supplement amount. If the reason for you drinking green tea is uh, the L-theanine, there is better ways to get it. Just take the supplement, you will be better off and you will not stain your teeth and you will not face the consequences of the other components, which we will get to now. So the next one is caffeine. Caffeine, we covered this in the previous video. Caffeine is a drug, it's a stimulant. Caffeine is not a supplement, it's not a vitamin, it's not something that gives you some permanent effects that you can carry on with your life that accumulates over time, that makes you a stronger, better person. No, it's a stimulant and indirectly over long enough time, if you take a stimulant, you might experience some side effects, you could call them, that will maybe increase some areas of your life. So for example, if you are an avid caffeine consumer, you will have more excretion of cortisol and more cortisol leads to a faster heart rate. A faster heart rate leads to more physical and mental activity, which leads to less cardiovascular diseases, which leads to less chances of diabetes, which leads to maybe a more long and meaningful life. But don't you see how ridiculous that is? That you're taking a stimulant for you to leave the door. People on average will walk a thousand steps more by drinking one cup of coffee in the morning this already solves a lot of the mystery around coffee, why people perceive it's healthy, why scientists think that it's gonna improve uh, longevity of the people. Yes, because statistically it will. Statistically, I'm sure it will, but I don't think that you consider yourself part of statistic. I believe you consider yourself way more than that. That's why you're here. That's why you're learning about self-development, self-improvement, and this video is about making you the absolute best that you can be, all right? Okay, so the first one is L-theanine. The second one is caffeine. The third one, is catechins. Okay, so catechins, and the more specifically, the type of catechin we're talking about here is called EGCG. And this is basically an antioxidant, which acts with a lot of anti-aging effects, and it's helping your body and your mind in many different ways. However, 
we run into the same dilemma now as we did with the L-theanine because it's in fruits, it's in berries, it's in chocolate. And they come in almost similar identical amounts per 100 grams. So think about it. A bag of tea is what? One gram, maybe like the high quality ones are three grams. An apple is 100 grams. And they contain the same component. They contain the same antioxidant, catechin. So by eating one apple, you're saving yourself 50 cups of tea. By eating a bar of chocolate, maybe you're saving yourself a whole year of drinking tea. So it makes no sense to drink it for the antioxidant effects. And this is one of my biggest issues with health literature because these people, they have no idea about science. They are looking at a certain thing like green tea, then they break down the different ingredients and the components that green tea has. And then they look for the studies for each individual of these components and then they find the health benefits for them. And then they put them back into the article and now suddenly you have a list of 10 benefits of drinking green tea, which is technically true, but it's also complete BS. You could say the fourth component of green tea is fluoride. You will have as much fluoride in a cup of green tea as you do in a piece of toothpaste, you know, like when you have like one uh, tip of the teaspoon, about the same amount. The only difference is you don't drink the toothpaste, but you do drink the green tea. Why would you want to calcify your pineal gland by drinking the green tea with all the fluoride inside? Why would you like to stain your teeth in the process of taking care of your oral health? So let's just sum it up again, caffeine, Stay away from it, it's a stimulant, you don't need it, you're better without it. Catechins, eat your fruits, eat your berries. L-theanine, if you really need it, take the supplement, there's no point in drinking all the tea for that reason. And, and then when it comes to fluoride, if you believe that you need fluoride, brush your teeth, but stay away from actually consuming it. I'm sure there is fluoride in your water, you're getting plenty of it. And someone also asked about matcha tea, is it any different? Yes, matcha tea contains a little bit more of L-theanine, you might actually get a little bit more of that L-theanine buzz from drinking matcha tea, but then you're also getting the caffeine. So again, you're running into the same problem. People are addicted to caffeine. They, they wake up in the morning, they feel like shit, and they're like, oh wow, if I just drink a cup of coffee, then I will feel better, which you will, because you have withdrawal symptoms. Just like an alcoholic who takes two shots of vodka in the morning and starts feeling better and starts attributing vodka to something good. It's not because you've created an addiction. That's all it is. It doesn't do anything beneficial to you. You're just alleviating the pain of abstaining from it. You're alleviating the pain of abstinence rather than adding value to your life. Power is a choice and not a privilege. Goodbye.